you, James. Um, what, what are you able to do in these workouts? How close do you feel to a to a possible return out there? Uh, I feel really, I feel really good. Just uh, um, just trying to get my conditioning back. Uh, just change the speeds, change the direction, uh, making sure you know the power and and the quickness is there to be able to move how I you know how I move. But so far, so good. Today was really good, and we just got to keep building on that. We see uh, how involved you are, how engaged you are on the sidelines during games. Players are praised. You know the communication that you have internally. What's going on? Knowing how much you love the game and love being on the floor internally. What's you know what's going on as you uh, as you watch these games and encourage your teammates from the sideline? I feel like uh, my voice is is very very important. Uh, you know to the team. Obviously on the court, you know it's, it's a lot better. But you know while I'm not while I'm not you know active and able to play, I think my voice can be very very impactful. It's just trying to help guys, you know, give guys nuggets here and there uh, on, on what I see and ultimately for, to help our team be better. Um, and I think my communication can go a long way. So just try to stay involved as much as I can uh, while I'm not physically out there to be on the court. But, um, you know, just uh, it's been tough. It's been very difficult, especially for me, just being out for the longest I've been, you know, my whole career. Um, so I just try to stay involved, try to, you know, keep that positive energy and, um, you know, you know, keep my voice involved. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Brian, you're muted. Hey, James. How you doing? Um, I am curious what, uh, A, it's a two-part question. What is the actual next benchmark, I guess, that you have to hit in this this rehab and this this return? And secondly, are you fairly confident that by playoff time that you'd be ready to play? Very, very, very confident. Um, I guess the mark that I have to hit is the the, the work that I did today. Um, you know, I have a couple of those without any 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 feeling, um, and that's that's pretty much the mark. But I'm fairly well, very confident that I'll be back before postseason. Um, yeah. Greg Logan with Newsday. Greg. James, sorry, I had I had to find my uh, picture here. <laughs> Basically, I just want to know: uh, Do you feel like you, you you said you'll you feel like you'll be back before the postseason? Is there any chance that you will play one or two games before the end of the rain? <laughs> And and also and also the second part of the question. It, it seems so clear, the Nets are missing your playmaking. What kind of difference do you feel you can make for them? You know, later in the playoffs with your playmaking. Uh, you're trying to get me on the first question. Um, that's the plan. The plan is to. Hopefully, get an opportunity to play a couple games before the before the postseason. Uh, we're just taking it one day at a time, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna just leave it at that. And then for the next part, um, yeah, of course, like my playmaking and my scoring and the IQ and all that good stuff. But we've had a number of opportunities to win games that we didn't win, and it's because of the, the little things that we're not doing consistently. Um, which maybe it's because of practice time, maybe it's because of you know, the schedule is we were playing games every other day, but we've had some really good film sessions the last few days on the small detailed things, the boxing out, the, the screening offensively, the the just the, just the possessions like that to where we can control. Um, and ultimately, that's going to get us over the top as far as winning games. But as far as me individually, like everybody know what I bring to the table. Um, and so I'm just I'm just patiently waiting to get back on the court and, and help the guys and 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 ultimately, you know, reach what we're trying to accomplish. Malika Andrews with ESPN. Hey, James. Uh, both Steve Nash and Kevin recently have been talking about 
overcoming the lack of common history that you all have together playing. Um, watching this, watching what's been happening over the last couple of games, where do you think you fit in and trying to kind of immediately, we've been talking about it all season, but come back, gel, build quick chemistry, and how much of an issue do you anticipate that potentially being? Not an issue at all. I think one of the things that a lot of teams don't have is talent. You know, so we we don't have to worry about that aspect. You know, we can control the the rebounding and the screening. Like we can watch film and get better than better at that. Um, but skill wise, we're we're elite. So I'm not. That's not my. You know, I'm not worried at all. Um, I think for us, you know, you look at teams like Milwaukee, who's pretty much core has been together for some you know few years now. They've been through you know the playoff trenches or what or whatnot. Um, you know, so they got that chemistry. They've been through tough times. We haven't. You know, but I think that if we can just stay locked in on the detailed things like the rebounding, the basketball, like boxing out individually, uh, screening, um, doing the small things, not trying to make the same mistakes defensively and offensively uh, twice and limiting our turnovers. I think if we can just things that we can control, if we can just do those things, um, it's going to be very, very difficult for teams to beat us. Um, and so I'm just excited to get back. Um, I love, you know, our energy and what we're doing right now, even though, you know, the wins and losses, the, the, the games, the outcomes of the games haven't shown, but I love where we are as a team. And, um, you know, once I get back, it just, uh, it's just uphill from there. Thank you. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Hey, James, I got two for you as well. Just when you had the setback with this injury, and I want to say you guys were in New Orleans, um, Were you? did you think you were close to returning at that point, or did you still have a ways to go even even when you had that to, to get back on the court? Um, I thought I was returning. Um, but then obviously you just the feeling still wasn't there. So you want to be patient. You want to be, you know, as much as I love the hoop, like I want to be out there. I I, I want to be out there, but you got to be smart. And, and for me, it was just, all right, let's, let's knock this thing out. Let's get this thing healthy so we can make a push. Um, I think, and then for me, this, at this point in my career, I think, you know, going into postseasons, basically since I've you know been in Houston and whatnot, I've been playing heavy minutes, heavy minutes, you know, whatever, just carrying the load, carrying the load. And this is an opportunity for me to get my body right going into the postseason with, with a clear mind and a clear body of, all right, you know, you got 16 games to win. Um, and, and that's the ultimate goal. That's, you know, the reason why, you know, I came to Brooklyn. So uh, just kind of give me an opportunity to sit back, you know, think a little bit more um, and get outside of myself and, and, you know, show the expression and kind of help, you know, my teammates and coaches, coaches um, in any way that I can. And then just my second one, you know, when you got traded here in January, you said you didn't really know Steve that well aside from playing against him. Just what, what do you think the biggest thing you've taken from him now that you've been been coached by him for about five months or so? Uh, how much of a you know, genius he is as far as, you know, basketball. Like, this, you know, he's he's elite. And that's obviously, you know, went into two MVPs. But just uh, his basketball mind, his IQ is, is you know, above the charts. And our, our communication is constant, like, Literally, you know, I think about basketball literally all, all day. Um, you know, we had, we had a film session yesterday and, you know, we, we talked about some things or whatnot. And just I was thinking about it the entire day. And I ended, I ended up calling Steve last night and he th- felt the same way. He was thinking about thinking about the game, thinking about the film sessions or whatnot. And we just talked for maybe 15, 20 minutes about things that we can control, things that we need to be better at, things that he see on the film or throughout the course of the games and, and vice versa. So it's just that constant communication that we're on the same page that, um, you know, even though he's coaching right now, he's still a competitor and wants to win. And, um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's an unbelievable leader. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, James, how's it going? Um, you know, there's, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot made of the fact that you, Kevin and Kyrie have only played, what, six and a half, or seven games, I guess, total together um, as a unit since the trade. I'm wondering if you think that's something that you guys will be able to overcome as a trio, specifically you three, just not having that about that time that you played together, you three, uh, or if you think that's something that, you know, obviously because you guys aren't practicing or haven't had, been able to practice since the you know, practice time, is that something that you guys are just going to have to deal with and, and figure out on the fly? You can, I mean, you got three of the most elite basketball players in the game today and probably that you know that's ever played you know in the sense of skill wise so that's not the problem the problem is the, the detailed things that I, I've talked about earlier you know the things that 
we all as a group need to do and focus on, you know, our shots. Like, we know our roles. Like, I know my role. I know what I'm supposed to be doing on the court. And and I think everybody on the team knows their role. Um, I know when I have Kevin and Kai and the rest of the guys on, 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 on the floor that, you know, I don't have to score 30 points to win games. And we've seen that all year. Like, I can be a playmaker. I can do whatever necessary to win the game. I think everybody feels the same way. So it's not about scoring the basketball. It's about the other things that probably won't still show up on the stat sheet, but that will get us wins. And once we get that, it's going to be, it's going to be tough for, for teams to beat us, like I said. Thank scoring, you, Greg. Scoring won't be an issue for us at all. Back to Greg Logan with Newsday. Uh, James, uh, I just want to follow up on that. You were talking about, you know, how you could facilitate uh, everybody starting to score better. Uh, can you just describe, you know, your philosophy in terms of being a playmaker more than a scorer? and how you feel you are going to impact this team going forward? <laughs> um, I think just just reading the game. You know, I don't go, I don't go into games saying, well, tonight I'm going to be a playmaker or tonight I'm going to be a scorer. I read and, and take what the defense gives me. and It's possession by possession, you know. So, And, and for me, I draw so much attention. Um, that I'm able to get guys shots and get guys easy baskets, you know, at the rim. So it's just it's, it's possession by possession, and it's uh, the flow of the game. You know, I let, I let the game dictate on how you know aggressive or, or not I need to be. Um, and that's pretty simple. And I think for us as a, as a unit, uh, we just need to uh, tighten up on a little bit of things. And and you know, coming down the stretch, I think we got six games left. So um, focus on each possession on both ends of the ball, defensively and offensively. Uh, how can we have each other's back? How can we bring um, energy? Guys off the bench, how can you come in and impact the game? And it's not necessarily just scoring. Guys like Bruce come in the game and change the game defensively, uh, change the game with his energy. And, you know, I had a, a meeting with the guys earlier today about that um, in a sense of, you know, you guys are going to win us a lot of games. You know, obviously, you know, Kevin, Kyra, and myself get, you know, you know all, a lot of the credit, but, you know, we need – from top to bottom, we need every individual on this team in order for us to, to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. And, you know, I made it clear to those guys today that they're very valuable and they're very important in what we're trying to do. So um, just make sure we, we our energy is up and, and we're cheering and we're excited for each other, you know, and, and we're all on the same page. Last question, back to Malika Andrews with the ESPN. James, I, I just kind of once and for all, this absence, the time you've taken away, it's it's the, the longest you've been away from the game. Has it changed or affected your outlook on what you think this team can do this season at all? No, no. I just, um, no. Like, we're, we're sitting in this second spot, and we've had so many different lineups. That right there tells you how great or good or whatever you want to call it that this team is. So once we, you know, I think the, the most important thing for us going into the postseason is health. And this, this season has been so condensed. You know, you see a lot of guys are going down because of the amount of games, you know. So I think for us, our mindset is, all right, if we can come to this postseason healthy, um, we are right there. We got a chance. <laughs> and and that's, that's it right there with itself. So finish these last six games out strong. Uh, focus on the things that we need to focus on, things that we can control, and go out there, have fun, and um, and we live with the results.